Hey, what's up? I'm Liz, this is the DIY, and today I am lucky enough to have been able to finally procure a Raspberry Pi Zero W. Now, for those that don't know, um, Raspberry Pi Zero W is a tiny little board, as you can see. It came out in February. It's the newest board from the Ras Raspberry Pi Foundation, and it builds on the Pi Zero, which already existed, only adds uh, Wi-Fi connectability, uh, thus the W. Otherwise, you just have to use um, like an Ethernet over USB adapter. It's a really cool little board. I mean, think about the engineering that had to get it this small. It's really crazy to think about. I mean, it still has the ARM processor. It still like can do everything basically that the Pi 3 can do with the exception of like a couple things, but still has the GPIO, still can run Linux. It's insane. So I wanted to do something special with this board to kind of kick it off. Um, and so I decided to do um, a retro Pi install, which I actually hadn't done yet um, with Pi, uh, the Pi platform. So I wanted to try that out. It was my first time dealing with emulators and everything like that. Really cool experience. Um, I'd say installing RetroPie is actually a little bit easier than installing Raspbian. Um, it's definitely faster. Um, what you do is basically just go to the RetroPie site, which I will of course link down below in the description. And you just download the ISO, format your SD card, get the ISO on there, and then you're basically ready to go. That's really all you have to do. If you want some more details on how to set up RetroPie, um, ETA Prime, he really specializes in uh, game emulation and single board computers, stuff like that. Uh, I'll link down his videos in the description as well. Really good content. That's actually what I use to get started to load this up. Once you uh, get RetroPie loaded on here, when you first boot, it'll ask you to kind of configure your game controller. Very simple. You just press the buttons for what you want them to do. I was using my USB gamepad, which you've seen a couple times before, and work no problem. Of course, if you want to use RetroPie to its fullest, or at all, really, you need some ROMs. We aren't going to talk about ROMs because it's a gray legal area, but if you have some ROMs, you can uh, upload them either through a USB stick or over the network directly to the Pi Zero. I found it to be a lot easier to just do it over the network. The USB is a little cryptic. Um, it's kind of hard to tell what you're doing. So. Um, Going over network, all you do is just go open up File Explorer on Windows or, you know, your Mac or Linux equivalent, um, and then you just type in slash slash RetroPy, and you immediately connect, and then you are into the file system of the RetroPy um, OS, and you can just load the ROMs into the appropriate ROM folders, and then you're ready to go after a reboot. Very simple. Um, Playing the ROMs was really awesome with the controller, everything worked really well, and that was basically it. And I honestly felt a little bit underwhelmed with this project. I just didn't feel like it went far enough. It, went, it was a little bit too simple. So what to do? Well, I did have an Adafruit arcade bonnet, which how adorable is it that the add-on things are called hats and bonnets for the Pi? I love that. Um, but I had an arcade bonnet that I had bought preemptively before I even had a zero or anything like that. Just kind of thought it was such a cool idea. It's basically an add-on so that you can connect up um, a joystick and arcade buttons to use with RetroPie. You can even hook up a speaker if you want. So I had that lying around and I had already soldered the headers. So I also had a shoebox and some duct tape and a joystick and some buttons and also a speaker. And so I decided to make an arcade box. And this is the final product of that. This was originally a shoebox and the coloring you're seeing is duct tape. I decided to make a striping pattern on the top and also the front where the speaker is, so it actually continues down. I put the speaker here so that when I'm playing, it's playing music towards me. Um, and then for the button configuration, it's very traditional. This is A, this is B, X, Y, start, select, and of course, the joystick. Um, all of these uh, hardware peripherals were from Adafruit, so I will link them down below so that you can also get them. Um, one thing you may notice though, the joystick on Adafruit has a red um, ball controller. I was able to find this really cool site called Focus Attack that just sells arcade peripherals. That's all they do. And they have the replacement balls. Um, so I got this pink one for like, I think a dollar and change. It was so cheap. Um, so that's why I went with that, just to match the aesthetic. Um, yellow could have been cool too, but I went with pink because uh, I love pink. Uh, so 
As you can see here, I've got holes uh, hollowed out for the HDMI and the power cord for the USB. And then this fun little thing on the side here, I actually had a um, USB hub that had three USB ports and ethernet. So I hooked that up to the available USB port so that if I needed to use a keyboard uh, to configure anything, I could just plug in really quickly. That's actually the dongle for my wireless keyboard. And then if I wanted to um, just load up a ROM or something really quick, I could just load it up to ethernet if I wanted to and just be on with that. Cause I actually had some trouble getting the Wi-Fi to work within RetroPie, but I think it's actually related to some uh, encryption that I have on my network. So that I think that's why. But anyway, so for assembly, um, first I measured the diameter of the actual stick of the joystick and the diameter of the speaker and cut hole, uh, traced holes onto the box for placement. And then for the arcade buttons, uh, it was actually a little bit simpler. I had a hole saw already that was the perfect size. So I just kind of like almost like a cookie cutter made little indentations in the box. And then I have a curved knife uh, from Ikea, but I don't use it for food prep anymore. I only use it for DIY things. So I was able to cut the holes out with that. And that was really simple. Same thing here. I just kind of approximated where I was going to have the various ports and cut holes out there. Then was the duct tapering process. Very simple, just taping it all up and then plugging in the buttons. Uh, you'll see that the joystick and the speaker are mounted. I had some uh, M3 size plastic screws and um, bolts. So I just mounted them in there. To do that, I just made little indentations with the screws into the duct tape. And then again, used my handy curved knife to make actual holes into the box and then was able to just screw it on there. It gives it a nice kind of finished look, makes everything really sturdy. Um, and then we're just kind of off and running. Oh, the hub is just taped in. Um, to secure the pie, I actually put some Velcro on the bottom of the acrylic case so that it would stay in place, but I didn't fully think out um, the logistics of the wires and the also the peripheral plugins and everything. So. It's a bit tight in there and the Velcro actually isn't in the proper placement. Um, the JST uh, quick connect wires, same ones I used in the MIDI fighter project are how I'm connecting the buttons and they just aren't long enough to do the clearance of the box depth. So I need to figure out something right there. It's just kind of, just kind of free floating uh, right now. Um, but yeah, after that, um, all that was left was software. And of course, since the Arcade Bonnet is from Adafruit, there is a lovely tutorial on their website, which I will of course link down below. And that's what I followed to get it up and going. All you have to do is boot up your Pi Zero and enable SSH uh, communication uh, within the settings menu. Then you're gonna need something to communicate from your computer to the Pi. I used PuTTY, that's generally what people use. Once you've hacked into your Pi using PuTTY, uh, you can just forward in the commands that Adafruit has to configure the Arcade Bonnet. It's basically just some Python script that you're installing so that it can recognize it. Now, when you push that through, um, don't panic if it takes a long time. It took about probably 10 minutes for it to finish up. It's doing a lot of stuff. It's installing a lot of things, configuring stuff and everything like that. So uh, there were a couple times I thought I had like, there was a hang up or I'd done something wrong or something like that. And I, I hadn't, it was just a little slow. So just be patient. Then the Pi will reboot. And then you have the option of loading up the portion of the script so that you can use the uh, speaker connector from the arcade bonnet, which I did do, load that up and then everything was good to go. If you change your mind and don't want to use the speaker, you can also like change it back to HDMI or 3.5 millimeter output, um, it's your preference, but this isn't like a one and done, like you, you can't change it back. Um, and then uh, one thing, the RetroPie didn't recognize these buttons and joystick right away for the controllers. Um, I think probably related to the fact that I'd already used a gamepad extensively on my, pot, uh, on my RetroPie install. Uh, so I just went to the controller config and just enter it in the appropriate button presses and that was good to go. And I actually found playing uh, the games with the this uh, setup was a lot smoother than with my gamepad. So if you're serious about retro gaming and you really want to have like a nice setup, definitely recommend the Arcade Bonnet. It's it got some really good results. Yeah, I'm really happy with this um, setup because 
you know, it's very lightweight and it also keeps everything really like packaged nicely. So when I'm not using it, I can put it away and it's all set. I can also have this on a tabletop for playing or in my lap and it's really comfortable to play and everything's a really nice distance. Um, and with this space here, there's even like a palm rest for my hand for the button. So yeah, I'm really happy with how this project came out. I think sometimes housings and final configurations can kind of keep people away from doing projects like this. And I, I want to encourage everyone to just kind of like, if you don't have access to some of the like more intense tools, like be creative. Like it, this I think looks really cool. Um, and you can like stylize it how you want, even if you just have access to something like a cardboard box or something like that. But that's gonna do it for this shoebox arcade controller. If you liked it, toss me a thumbs up. Leave any questions or comments down below. Are you into retro gaming? Uh, have you built a retro pie machine? Let me know. Uh, find me on social media. Links are down in the description as well as everything I referenced within the video um, as far as getting this set up. Thank you for watching. Consider subscribing for more content like this. This project will also be up on Hackster.io for those that prefer the written word. Uh, and until next time, this has been Blitz City DIY. Thank you.